everybody, welcome back to another episode of 5 Minute Gaming News, the show that may or may not be about Bethesda. Today in the news, the Starfield reviews are in, and it's, it's looking pretty good, which a lot of folks, myself included, were hoping for. At the time of recording this, Starfield currently sits at an 87 score on Metacritic, with many major outlets and reviewers giving it scores that span across the 80s and 90s. For comparison, Skyrim holds a 96 on the review aggregate site, while Fallout 4 sits at an 88. So there are your occasional perfect scores and your middle but still solid reviews, but for the most part, Starfield has a pretty good critic review start. Now, of, of course, the thing we should really address here is that Starfield and Bethesda were very selective about who they sent press copies to. Not a lot of people you would expect to get them got them, and a lot of those people, the reason why they didn't get them is because they've been pretty hard on Bethesda games in the past. So take that for what it is. The reviews we have at the moment are the reviews we have, and I'm sure more and more people will play, and over time we'll get a better idea of what this game is. Like I've told you before, I'm gonna hold off a month or two before I jump in, but it looks like the highlights of the game, the side quests, the exploration, the overall bespoke player experience, it looks good. The biggest critiques at the moment are the lackluster UI or the okay game systems, including inventory and the encumbrance management. The consensus of the reviews is that it's a fun game and it's really what you make of it, a sort of your mileage may vary kind of situation. And that's honestly the biggest takeaway from today. I don't know if your old Uncle Jesse can impart some wisdom on you here, but it looks like with this game, and let's be honest, Skyrim was a great example of another one in the past, that the most important score is going to be yours. Critics and media reviews are great in that they can help you determine if it's worth your time or money, but if you like Bethesda RPGs, you're going to like this one. And if you don't, it's not going to be your intergalactic cup of tea. And that's fine, because there's so many other games out there right now that there's no rush. Starfield ain't going nowhere. It's a huge game. It'll take people a while to actually explore everything and see everything and determine the true worth of what it is. And right now, like that anime your friends keep telling you to watch, but you know, takes like 50 hours before it gets good. That's pretty much the vibe of Starfield. It takes a while to get going. And so if you don't have that time at the moment, or that's not for you, right? You know, as a Final Fantasy 14 fan, I have to sit here and be like, dude, it becomes amazing. You just need to put in way too many hours. <laughs> like it's hard to do, but I understand. So, you know, I can't hate the game because of that because one of my favorite games literally does that. But if you got free time and you're looking for a space adventure and you want to get lost in the stars, honestly, the reviews pretty much indicate that this is that game and it should be a ton of fun. So enjoy. Or don't, I don't care. And while we're over here in the Bethesda-verse, the next Elder Scrolls game may be a little bit further off than you think. In a recently translated interview from Vandal, Pete Hines shared, and yes, there are people working on the Elder Scrolls 6, but this is what the studio has focused on, referring to Starfield there. So no, you're not going to hear soon about the Elder Scrolls 6. Starfield is our focus for now, and it's going to remain our priority for a while before we talk about anything else. When asked to confirm if the Elder Scrolls 6 was still in pre-production, Hines said, no, it's in development, but it's in early development. Which means that most likely back in 2018, when I was at the Bethesda Show, case and the game was announced, the game was probably in some sort of initial pre-pre-pre-production phase. But this isn't the first time we've heard about the Elder Scrolls sequel's early, early development. While speaking to press about Starfield earlier in August, Bethesda director Todd Howard suggested, looking back, he probably wouldn't have revealed the Elder Scrolls 6 in the same way. I probably would have announced it more casually, Howard said. And yeah, that checks out. Over the years, devs have been announcing the next big game earlier and earlier, right? I, I remember when Cyberpunk, we first got that initial trailer and then years went by. Who could forget the terminally never coming out beyond Good and Evil 2? I mean, Dragon Age 4 is a great example. They hyped that up and who knows when that's coming out next year, maybe? I totally understand getting a fan base hype, keeping investors happy, building momentum for release, but also it seems like if you're putting out a trailer five years before the game is out, it's, it's a little much. Honestly, I think the one that's nailed it so far has been Star Wars Outlaws. The game was officially announced this summer at Xbox Games Showcase, with 2024 as the release date, you know, barring any delays, and just weeks later, gameplay was showcased at the Ubisoft Forward livestream. Bing, bang, boom, it's a solid rollout, and we don't have to wait 
forever for more new information, leaving players wondering what's going on with the project, asking questions like, so what's going on with the project? So I guess at the moment, Elder Scrolls VI, it's the game your grandkids will love. And then in the continued saga of Embracer Group letting me down, while all this Starfield hype is going on, Embracer Group has shut down Volition, a studio they acquired back in 2018. In a post on LinkedIn, Volition shared, this past June, Embracer Group announced a restructuring program to strengthen Embracer and maintain its position as a leader in the video game industry. As part of that program, they evaluated strategic and operational goals and made the difficult decision to close Volition effective immediately. We thank our customers and fans around the world for all the love and support over the years. You will always be in our hearts. Now, for those of you who are unfamiliar with the name Volition, it is the studio behind Red Faction and the Saints Row series. Their most recent, of course, being 2022 Saints Row reboot, which honestly was not that great. And I think we can all agree it's a little slick, a little shady to announce this during all the press coverage of Starfield. Everyone's attention is somewhere else, and so they're dropping this information like, hey, we killed another studio, because Embracer Group has done a lot of this lately. They bought up all these studios, all these titles, and then just are scrapping them? The hope was Embracer Group would bring these titles back, bring these studios back, and instead, like all big buy-ups, which is why Xbox buying studios worries me, like when EA started buying studios, just if it doesn't go right immediately, scrap it. It's truly, truly awful when that happens. I will never forgive EA for what they did to Dead Space and how they like purposely made Dead Space 3 jank and then were like, didn't work, scrap the team. That's, <sighs> My heart goes out to everyone affected. Saints Row 2, 3, 4, some of my favorite games. Absolutely love them, and uh, it totally sucks. Anyway, that is it for me. Thanks again, and I'll see y'all tomorrow for another episode of 5-Minute Gaming News.